Hey there, Odoers. Jose Ignacio here. Today we're going to see how Jose's Bistros, or JB's, manages its processes. Now, this place happens to be a restaurant located in downtown Santa Cruz, and it's a special spot for locals that manages a short but beloved menu with options that anyone can get behind. It doesn't try to be something it's not, like grapefruit. Ugh, I'm looking at you. At JB's, everything from the employee schedules and even just cooking their dishes needs a fast-paced approach, so they use Odoo to make sure that they don't lose to that new burger spot that opened up. We don't like them. With Odoo, they succeeded in automating many of their processes, making things far easier and more efficient. I think it's time for us to dive into JB's daily life with Odoo. So I'll see you there. Enough chit chat. In a restaurant, there are many different jobs, owners, waiters, chefs, dishwashers, the list goes on. But it's vital to organize schedules accordingly to avoid an empty shift or a doubled up shift for someone. So to manage this, Jose's Bistro uses Odoo's planning application. So let's actually hop into there right now. Okay, so to save some time, I've actually gone ahead and set up the previous week's schedule so that we can just edit it as needed. This is gonna be important for what we're gonna head into. So to start, I have all of my employees over here on the left, and I just wanna say this makes it look really easy. This happens to be listed by name, and you'll see above the employees are open shifts as well. So this view that we're in is an overview of the schedule, which right now I'm viewing by the resource, AKA the employee. They are our resources. If I would like to view it by role, I can actually go up here to the top and schedule, and then choose by role. But for now, we're gonna go back again to resource. Okay, so this view itself, by the way, if you're wondering, is called a Gantt view, and it is incredibly useful for a few reasons. You're going to see that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I don't have any notes that apply to this week. So I can actually click into the shifts like this one here, and I can see a nice, not very friendly note, but it lets me know, hey, I should watch out for this. So you'll find the notes appear right here in this case with a message bubble icon on the shift. If you see it at the top, you know that there's something going on. They can be pretty basic or as informational as you need them to be. You're also going to find all of the open shifts, as I said, on this overview. And if I wanted to, here's the fun part. I can actually drag and drop them for any employee. And if I'm feeling even lazier, I can actually hold down the control key right now while moving it, and I have just duplicated it. This can save you time depending on what you're doing. And while I'm at it, you probably noticed that holding down the key opened up the shortcuts that you can also take advantage of. You got this nice little visual aid that shows them around. Okay, since we're here, I'm actually going to go ahead and create a shift by hovering over the day that I want, and then the employee, and just clicking on the empty box. There we go. Okay. So, of course, schedule conflicts can still happen. In that specific case, a warning is displayed as a result on the shift, as you just saw me very eloquently create. Now, unpublished shifts as well will appear striped, like we see here. But then, let's assume that JB's planning is ready. When that happens, the manager actually just has to click over here at the top on the Publish button. And that sends out this week's schedule to the employees. Now, the nice thing here as well is that the arrow next to this also allows us to copy our previous week as well as Auto Plan. To learn more about those, though, please check the description below for our sweet docs. So, let's click it. And once we do that, the option to send and publish will appear inside of this pop-up window. The option as well to include open shifts is an option that we can select. I have it right there already set up, and we're going to do that right now. But let's talk about availability. If an employee happens to not be available for the shift, they can request a shift change that has to be validated by the manager. You're going to notice now that the schedule is published, all those stripes are gone, and I love these pastel colors. So now that the planning has been sent, employees can get to work, which means that orders will be placed and waiters and cooks need to communicate. I think we can all agree that most of us here are visual learners. I mean, you happen to be on a YouTube video and I happen to always show you a lot of these things in theory. So I think it's time for us to grab our hat and head on over to Jose's Bistro so I can show you what this all looks like on a tablet. So I'll see you right there. Welcome to Hodu POS. Here, when open, the front end offers an overview of the floor's map. Here we have the main dining room floor as well as our patio. We can actually toggle between them by selecting them just like this. This is particularly useful when working with an iPad or tablet to take orders from table to table. Here's a helpful tip. The POS can be updated on the fly and these tables can be moved and they can also be removed as well as being added. Let me show you how to do that. In order to start, we're gonna select our main floor 
Then we're gonna select our stack icon. And then we select edit plan. For my example, I'm gonna select table seven. Now, if I touch these white dots, I can actually drag them around to change the size of the square, but I'd like to direct our attention up above. The very first option allows us to change the tables to the shape of a circle, allowing you to cater to a non-square floor map, kind of like table six down there. Speaking of maps, our next option allows you to upload your own table map. This allows you to bust out that sweet design you paid for, or maybe you needed to save some money and you used AI to save even further time. Odoo doesn't care, but it lets you carry those options. Options like changing the number on any one of these tables with this rename button. And if you like the table so much, well, let's assume that you want to duplicate it. Well, we've got you covered with our clone button over here. This allows you to stamp across all the tables that you've been duplicating and save further time. But let's assume you messed up. Well, here's this trash icon and you can now erase away your mistakes. Just to add a table once again with this table button. Now that we've finished talking about these options, I think it's time for us to zoom out. You probably noticed, I skipped one of them. Well, that's because this button coming up allows us to change something very important. When selected, we can change the number of seats with this little people icon. One, three, seven, it does not matter how many people are on those seats. Once you hit okay, it's saved. And just like that, now that we've figured out everything to our business, I think it's time to hit save and pat ourselves on the back. It's finally time to order. So to do that, we first select a table like table three. Here, we are greeted with a large selection of items. You don't have to scroll through it all. Instead, you can select a category at the top, such as drinks, or maybe you just want to see food. Or both again, because you're indecisive. We could do it all, so let's get started adding items like this espresso. And you know what? What goes best with coffee? Seafood. So let's add this salmon. Now the table wants Italian, so how about we select something like this pizza? Now we're greeted with this. Odoo lets you configure additional extras and things like combos with drinks and sides. So for this pizza, I'm just gonna go with the pepperoni to ruin the margarita vibes. Awesome. But let me tell you about one more thing. Let's assume we add something like the salmon avocado over here, which I know comes with a sauce. And we've just learned that the person who asked for this has an allergy, so we need to modify it. So to do that, we finally select the kitchen note option and we get this pop-up once that we click it, where now we can manually enter the note in or we can use one of these pre-configured notes that we set up for the kitchen. This can save you time typing. So once we're back at this screen over here, we finally choose our no dressing option. And then once that I do that, you'll see it fill in below and we apply. Now the kitchen will be notified of this modification automatically once that we proceed with sending it through to the kitchen. Sweet. I think it's time for us to talk about the sharpest team here at Jose's Bistro. No, not that team. Of course, I'm talking about our kitchen staff. So let's head into Odoo's kitchen display. Once that this loads, we're gonna select our preparation screen. And inside of here, keynote doers can see that no dressing has been color labeled as a predefined internal note, along with all of our orders we have sent so far. This allows chefs to immediately see what's ready to go and wait staff to also see what's been completed. Each of these orders only require simple clicks to move between stages, making certain wait staff and kitchen staff don't waste any time. That was a free joke with that time we just saved outdoers. You treated someone to a meal and they ordered stuff out of your budget. So there's only one option. You'd like to split the bill. Well, thankfully, Odoo has you covered. Let's assume your waiter comes by to check on the table, so they decide to go into actions and double check the count for the table and make sure it's two. And then they decide to go back into the actions menu because this time you've told them, I would like to split the bill. Now on one side, they see the items and they are told which ones to select and then they just split the order. Awesome. Now we have the two orders and the current screen has changed to paying for just the two items we selected. The 4B at the top lets us know this is one of the split orders for table four. We can now go and process the payment for this order and then process the payment for the remaining order. However, they've told me they are not ready to pay yet, so let's get out of here and direct our attention to another table that's asking for their bill. So table 12 has entered the chat. They've finished eating and they want to pay their bill. We let them know at this stage how much it's going to be per guest. They decided to pay it together, unlike that other table. They begin to hand cash over to the waiter, who takes it back to get them changed. Thankfully, Odu calculated the change for us based on the bills they used. At this point, the waiter returns to offer them their full receipt over here in two forms, both printed and email. Awesome. What is a good POS system without items to sell? Like, how do we add a product? 
like this bag of chips, or perhaps this soda. We start by clicking in the top right corner to open the menu and selecting Create a Product. From here, you can begin typing up your product's name and to begin work on the other options as well. We're gonna add a Pepsi. Now the first option we have here is the barcode section, which allows you to input barcodes using the tablet's camera or a connected device. Heck, you could even type it in manually. You can also track products if you'd like using the checkbox below. If you also happen to have a nice picture of the item, you can use the pencil icon in the top right corner to insert your image here. Then when you're done with that, you can select a POS category for the product to have it show up in those specific drink or food sections that you saw earlier. For our example, I'm gonna place the Pepsi into the drinks category because it is a drinkable item. Finally, once you're all done, you just click out of here and select save, and you're ready to go without having to go into Odoo inventory. A couple clicks was all it took. Nice. Jose's Bistro is in Santa Cruz, California. You might be wondering about this screen. No, not that screen. How does a customer leave a tip? Do we leave a tip? Tip culture itself is a big question these days. One that I do not have a direct stance on. If the customer is paying via credit card, the tip can be added to the bill afterward, which is common in North America. Tipping in Odoo is simple. Make sure if tips are enabled in the POS settings and tap on the payment button. Then tap on tip. Type in a beautiful exorbitant tip and hit OK. And now we're ready to process our payment the normal way with validating it. And we're done. Good job. It's finally that time. You've finished your shift or perhaps need to get out of this POS session. To do that, click the icon in the top right corner and select close register. Here we are shown a snapshot of today's transactions as well as the option account cash. Odo kept track of every transaction so we didn't have to do much. Now then, let's select close register. Good job, you've finished everything. Now get out of here. Well, that sure was a lot of helpful visual aids. I hope me doing it on the iPad was pretty fruitful for you. But how do we make all of this possible? Well, to enable notes, things like tips, printing, and everything, you actually want to go into POS and then select configuration and settings. Then pick your options there. It's really that easy. But if you need a little bit more help, I'm going to try to leave a better detailed help guide at below inside of the description. So be sure to check that out. Just kidding. I'm actually going to cover that right now. So back here on Odoo's main dashboard, let's open up the POS app and then select configuration and settings. Perfect. So inside of here, if you happen to see a yellow banner up here at the top, like the example that I'm going to show right now on the screen, as well as options that you see that are grayed out, you will actually not be able to change them until you finish closing your open register. So how do we do that, Jose Ignacio? Well, you do this by following the steps of the previous chapter in this video to close out your session. And in this case, just close the register. So once that you've done that and you're back here, we are in the restaurant mode section. Now make sure you have these boxes that I have checked out so that you could follow along. You will see that we have access to changing floor maps as well over here on the right. And you can see my main floor and my patio that I showed earlier, as well as an internal link to go see those floors and do some other edits if you will. But let's move a little bit forward because the next section that I wanted to point out is actually right here, these payment methods. Now, I didn't cover them in great detail because there is a lot to choose from depending on location and availability. Changes to this list are gonna be reflected directly in the POS payment and order screen. And below them is also an internal link you can follow to set up more payment methods or edit your existing payment methods. And let's actually click on that so I could show you that. There you go, nice little list. Back to settings over here using our breadcrumbs, which are restaurant breadcrumbs. So back over here, let's scroll down over to payment terminals because, and it's really down here. All right, so here we are at payment terminals. Now I wanted to actually talk about this and the connected devices section, because if you have a current payment terminal, such as, you know, Stripe, then this is the area you're gonna wanna select it at. Then finally below this at the section, you can actually toggle for things such as a customer display in case that you'd like your customers to follow along with you as you check them out. And that can be set up as a POS device, as well as IoT boxes and printers here. And you can even upload your own nice little picture right there just to customize it even further and make it a bit more personal. So there's many options and settings to personalize your own POS experience, but I wanted to share the ones that I had on for our example. This database itself was created using the Odoo Industries link for fine dining. So you can actually have a go at a similar experience without having to figure out the setup. It was essentially the stock experience with the exception of our Pepsi edition. 
All right, now let's go back to the other Jose Ignacio. Now, once that you have all of that set up and you've set up your products, your table layout as well, and your printers, your customers can start ordering. And that's it for today's presentation on JB's restaurant and the Odoo POS planning and inventory application. To learn more about these specific applications, I encourage you to check out more of our e-learning videos. Thanks for tuning in, Odooers. I appreciate you all. If no one's told you this today, you're doing great. You're learning Odoo. It feels like a lot at first, but if I can do it, I think you can too.